So I've been training in Kung Fu for over 28 years. And I own a school, martial arts school, Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, located in Chicago. And I've been running that school for about 10 years. I also have four years experience as a former police officer. So based on my experiences, I'm gonna speak about why I think um, full contact sparring doesn't make sense, all right? Um, so you look at, I'll use some examples. You look at Kevin Durant, you know, because I follow basketball. He tore his Achilles and he's out for about a year. You look at LeBron James, he, he pulled his groin area and he was out for a few months. You look at Klay Thompson, he, he tore his ACL, so he's gonna be out for about a year. So these are professional athletes getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball, but once they get injured, they can't play anymore. And that's a huge problem. Um, it gets in, in, in the way of their livelihood and they're, they're, you know, gets in the way of doing and practicing what they love. Another example is Derrick Rose. You know, he used to play for the Chicago Bulls. He was an amazing basketball player until he, he tore his ACL. And then from then, he just kept getting injuries and injuries and injuries, and he never recovered to where he used to be. So these injuries are very serious, and although they're not life-threatening, they are career ending many times to the point where you will never be able to express the skill level of your craft at that level ever again because of an injury. Now, when we bring it back to the relation of the martial arts, you gotta also put in mind that these people that I just you know, listed, they're all professional athletes that are getting paid millions of dollars and they have sustained these serious injuries that require surgery and rehabilitation and they still can't recover to get back to where they used to be. You bring it back to the context of the martial arts, how do martial artists make money? Now, some people might mistakenly confuse that competition fighters are the same as martial artists, but I don't confuse that. To me, they are different. They are not the same. So there is a competition fighter, and then there's a martial artist. So what I'm saying is full contact sparring does not make sense for a martial artist. But for a competition fighter, on the other hand, these people are more like more like boxers, you know, wrestlers, cage fighters. People that fight for money are like competition fighters. Now, that's different than martial arts. Martial arts is like a lifestyle, a way of life, self-preservation. So you're there to protect your health, not to destroy it. So. Full contact sparring, it's something where if you truly mean full contact, that means that you're not holding back any of your power. You're hitting and striking as hard as you possibly can. And when people train hard, no matter if they're fighters or martial artists, and they train really hard, they're really strong, they're very powerful, then their techniques become very dangerous and potentially life-threatening. So this is not just soccer, this is not just basketball, this is not just tennis. This is like you striking somebody with full force, with your fists, or with your kicks, or your knee strikes, or your elbows, or choking techniques, slamming techniques, dropping people down on their head. These are life-threatening. Um, techniques that if you execute them with full force against somebody who cannot take that force you can literally accidentally kill them or purposefully kill them just recently I read an article somebody got into it argument with somebody at a party and then he chopped them in the neck 
he slapped, they said he slapped him in the neck, didn't even chop him. Slapped the guy in the neck, and then he ruptured the side of his neck, some vessel, and then the guy died. So the guy got, he didn't get that much prison time, maybe like three years or seven years or something, but he killed somebody because of slapping him in the side of the neck. There's a lot of articles that I've been reading where somebody punches somebody one time and then the, uh, the guy ended up dying. So these techniques are very dangerous and lethal if you don't have control of them. So full contact, when you say full contact, that's like letting, you know, full power. Now if somebody's trained He's very strong, very powerful, and he hits as hard as he possibly can. He could kill somebody. And that's very, very dangerous. So it doesn't make sense like to spar in full contact at any time. So sometimes people, once again, they miss like communicate or they um, confuse people into saying that full contact sparring is two people putting on boxing gloves and then hitting it as hard as they can. In my eyes, that's not truly full contact because they're using, they have boxing gloves on. And the big glove in itself is serving as a way of protecting the fighting situation so that people don't get too injured. So that's just another way of holding back power to keep the sparring engagement safer. So they basically mislabeled people who engage in, you know, any type of sparring with equipment such as gloves, chest guards, mouth guards, and shin guards, and elbow pads, and knee pads. Like any type of protection that's used in sparring that's not truly full contact because that protection is serving as a way to protect the people involved from great bodily harm. So professional boxing, even when they're in that boxing ring, is not truly full contact because they have the gloves on. And even with the cage fighting, even with in cage fighting, because of the gloves, because of the mouth guards, and because of the fact that there are those rules of what they can and can't do, even that is not truly full contact. So the truest sense of true full contact just doesn't make sense no matter what you practice. Full contact sparring doesn't make sense in martial arts and it doesn't make sense in combat sport fighting either because it is just too lethal. Full contact can only occur during like real life threatening situations. It doesn't have to be in the streets. It could be in your home. It could be in your place of business. It could be in the elevator. It could be in the bar. It could be in the club. Basically when a real fight happens and your life is truly at risk, that's when it is truly full contact. When a woman is being sexually assaulted, that is when it is truly full contact in a way of defending her life and fending off the offender. When a police officer is on duty and his, he's threatened, that is truly full contact. And a lot of times police officers respond with the firearm during those situations. So a real martial artist trains to be ready for full contact if his life is threatened and he feels the need to protect himself then he's trained for that but he doesn't just engage in full contact sparring with people just as a way to test his abilities because that's just not a smart thing to do it's not good for your health, and there's a lot of medical costs involved. If somebody gets seriously injured, say you, you, you knock out his eye socket, and then all of a sudden 
he's blind in one eye for the rest of his life. You know, you, you break his jaw. You know, you um, break his collarbone, you break his ribs. You know, you, you, you damage his, um, his, his um, grown area and then now he can't have kids anymore. You know, you hit him so so hard in the side of the head that he 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 can't hear for, out of that ear for the rest of his life. I mean, people that practice martial arts, most people that practice don't make money from it. So they're practicing something that they don't make money from, and then if you put them in the hospital, then how are they going to pay? for those medical bills. Where is that money coming from? You know, at least in combat sport, if a professional boxer gets hurt in the ring, you know, they pay for the, the medical bills. And on top of that, if he's a professional boxer, he's getting paid to be in that ring. But a lot of people that practice martial arts, they're not professionals. They're not professional fighters. So if they get injured or if they injure somebody else and they have lawsuits coming towards them for thousands of dollars of medical bills, it just doesn't make sense. You know, like in a competition fight, if, you know, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor decide to have a boxing match and then they're each getting paid like 300 million each or 500 million each for one boxing match and then Conor McGregor, as a result, gets a concussion from the event. Well, he's getting paid $500 million, so that one concussion is worth it, worth it for him. You know, or if Floyd Mayweather gets his tooth broken in, in a bout that paid him $300 million. Okay, so he broke, his tooth got broken, but he still got paid $300 million. Okay, you can understand the logic behind engaging in that type of activity. There's a lot more dangerous things that could happen to people other than just jumping in the boxing ring. Just like these people that are riding bikes in Tour de France right now, some of them get in some serious crashes and then end up in the hospital for weeks. Some of them could even die in a bike bicycle crash. And they're not even getting paid nearly as much money than some of these sport fighters. So the logic behind why a competition fighter would engage in that combative sport for that type of money, you can see the logic behind it, you can understand it. But for a martial artist, a person who doesn't make any money from fighting, why would he engage in dangerous sparring matches that are full contact when he's not getting paid any money to do so? and that if he hurts himself, he's going to have to pay his own medical bills. Or if he hurts the other person, then he may be sued and for the responsibility of paying that other person's medical bills. In addition, he might even be arrested and put in jail. Or he might even accidentally kill the person that he's sparring with in full contact and then end up in jail. There's just so many things that could go wrong with full contact sparring that it just doesn't make sense for anybody involved. Not for martial artists, not for competition fighters. You know, so that's why full contact sparring doesn't make sense to me. And just another thing to illustrate my point, like you've got these brass knuckles, like if somebody hits you as hard as they can, possibly can with these brass knuckles, you could be dead with just one punch. So there's no amount of training that could prep you up to take that type of damage your bones are fragile. Your cheekbone, your jawbone, your teeth, your nose, your eyes, your throat, your groin area, your kneecap, your ankle, your finger. Your body is very fragile. 
so, and there are weapons out there like this. There are bats out there. There are sticks out there. There are guns out there. There are knives out there. Like, you can't take damage from these types of weapons. The only thing that you can do is avoid it. Don't let them hit you. Don't let them shoot you. Don't let them punch you in the face with a brass knuckle. So a lot of it is about precision, is getting out the way. It's not about like taking the hit. It's not a boxing match. Like this is real life. Like you're not gonna be able to take a hit when somebody hits you as hard as they can with a brass knuckle. So you have to be smart how you train. You gotta train smart so you can live longer. You know, and there's no such thing as full contact sparring. Not in martial arts, not in competition fighting. There's only real fighting. When your life is at stake and you have to do what you need to do to survive. And that's just something that can or can't happen at any time, at any moment. In, indoors or outdoors, it could just happen. And then at that time, that's when your training comes in and you decide how you're gonna handle that situation. A lot of times it's not gonna be a good thing to take somebody's life when you don't have to. So if you can handle that situation without taking their life away, then that would probably be the best thing to do. You know, as, as a last resort is when you need to hurt somebody in order to protect, protect your own life. And people that practice martial arts, they shouldn't want to hurt people. They should want to heal people. You know, so nobody wants to hurt anybody when they practice martial arts. They want to help people. So it's a different it's a different uh, practice. It's not the same as competition fighting. Competition fighting, you know, you're trained to knock the person out. Not to kill them, but to knock them out. But martial artists, you're not trained to hurt people when you don't have to. You train in order to live longer. You train in order to better your health. You train to protect yourself in case something happens. You train to protect your loved ones if they're in need of help. And if a martial artist could go his whole life without ever having to fight, then he has succeeded. As far as not having to result in using violence to protect himself. But there are situations when when violence comes towards your way and then you need to respond appropriately. But I wanted to share those thoughts and you know it's important for everybody out there to think about those things when they practice the martial arts. So once again, I wanna thank the supporters out there and if you enjoy YouTube channel, um, please leave a review um, on my Google business page and just click reviews. Do a Google search of Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, click reviews, and please leave a review. It means a lot. You know, as far as the people that don't like what I'm doing, um, don't like the videos, I'm sorry that you don't like the videos that I'm producing, but I'm sure that you'll find something out there on YouTube that you do like, and then you can support that channel. You know, so rather than spreading negativity onto my channel, you could use that energy and spread positivity to a channel that you do enjoy. But at this time in my life, I don't want problems with anybody. I'm just here to be honest with my expression of the martial arts, with my expression of Kung Fu, I don't want to create any arguments. I don't want any problems. You know, I just want to 
had the freedom to express myself and be myself. So, I hope that you realize that I'm not trying to come at anybody with ill intent. So once again, I thank you all. Um, if you haven't, you can subscribe and take care.